Hey guys, it's Chris at Highland Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. What I'm going to talk about today is a subject which I want to address some questions that have come up about this subject, but I've also noticed there have been some other videos made on the topic and so I think it's, it's kind of out there in the forefront of people's minds. So I thought I would make a video on it. And what I'm talking about is compound radius fretboards. It seems a lot of people want to know, how do you make a compound radius fretboard? How do you install the frets into a compound radius fretboard? And then how do you level the frets on a compound radius fretboard? First of all, to begin with, when we say compound radius fretboard, we're actually using the wrong term. It's been used for a long time and so people are kind of used to hearing it and that's what most people generally refer to a fretboard that has two different radii on its surface. But in truth, what we're talking about is a conical radius. With a compound radius, you would have two radii on the fretboard. For example, you might have 10 inches at one end and 14 inches at the other end. Where they meet near the middle, or at either end, depending on where you want the two to meet, you would have a hard line of delineation. So it would be 14 inches all the way and then suddenly changing to 10 inches. That's what a compound radius is. You're mashing the two together. With a conical radius, you would have maybe 14 inches at one end, 10 inches at the other. But where they meet, there's no line of delineation. It is a gradual blending of the two radii. And that's really what we are looking to achieve on a guitar. I suppose it's possible to have a true compound radius on a fretboard for a guitar, but I think it would be really difficult to set the instrument up to play correctly, and it would be difficult to play in the end. So what we want is truly a conical radius. Think of a funnel. A funnel is basically a big cone. At the base of that funnel, or the cone, you have a wide, flatter radius. And at the top of that cone, where it comes to a point, the radius is much smaller and more rounded. So if you took a slice out of that, the shape of a fretboard, you would have the wide radius at one end, like the heel, and then the uh, rounder, uh, tighter radius towards the nut. And from one end to the other, it would gradually change from that flatter radius to the tighter radius. So the question comes up, how do you actually make a fretboard like that? Well, <clears throat> as many of you know, I build most of my guitars these days using a CNC machine. And I have come to realize that when you make a conical radius fretboard, it is much easier to make it with a CNC machine than any other method. Uh, it's really just a matter of me making a 3D model of the fretboard, full size, full scale, which I can do literally in just minutes. And then I can assign the tool paths, put the blank on the CNC machine, and 30 minutes later, I've got a fretboard with a perfectly formed conical radius. Before I had a CNC machine, I used a couple of different methods to make it. The first one is probably the one that people most commonly think of when they start to plan on making a conical radius fretboard, and that is to use two different radius sanding blocks to sand the radius so that the two radius are blended somewhere in the center. The method that I use that it, it sort of works is and it's really actually, I think, the best method when it comes to using a sanding block is I would start out with one of these big, long sanding beams. Now, in those days, I was using a longer handmade wooden um, uh, radius sanding block. This one I made on my CNC machine. But in those days, I used a router to carve the radius. Uh, it was a fairly tedious process. But I could make a 30-inch long, uh, for example, 14-inch uh, radius sanding block. 
And what I would do is I would use that sanding block. Well, first of all, I would take my blank and I would cut it to the shape of the fretboard and then I'd glue it down to the neck. Then I would proceed with sanding the entire surface of the fretboard with that 14 inch radius. Or it might be 16, if, you know, depending on what two radii I was shooting for. But just as an example for this video, I would sand the entire surface with 14 inch radius. Now, what I, my plan was is to make a 14 inch radius at the heel end and then a 10 inch radius at the nut end. But I would sand the entire surface to have a 14 inch radius. Then I would switch to my 10 inch radius sanding block and I would place the middle of the sanding block right over the nut on the fretboard. And then I would sand back and forth until I was able to change the radius in the nut area from that 14 inches to 10 inches. Now because I've got this part of the, the fretboard always covered by the sanding block, this area gets the most sanding action so I can quickly bring it to a 10 inch radius. Up here towards the middle where the end of the sanding block is, because it's moving back and forth, the sanding action is about 50% of what the sanding action is at the nut. So it's not getting the full radius effect here. Instead, I'm gradually blending the two. However, I found that using that method, I would get that perfect 10 inch radius at this end. But as I move up the fretboard, because the 10 inch radius is only wearing down the edges of the fretboard as I'm sanding, I ended up, once I got the 10 inch radius at this end, towards this area in the middle of the fretboard where the two radii are blending together, I have a 10 inch radius along the edge, uh, both edges of the fretboard, but towards the center, it was still 14 inches. So what I actually ended up with is a facet. So 10 inches at the edge, 14 inches in the middle, and 10 inches on the other edge. And you can actually see it when you're sanding. It forms kind of a V shape where the small end of the V is up here towards the nut where the 10 inch radius is. And then it gradually moves out towards the edge here. To fix it, I would have to hand sand this area. And that was kind of difficult to do because there are no gauges that you can use to check that radius to, to see what your progress is. So it was kind of a hope for the best and go from there. Well, that, that just wasn't really working. And it was, it was one of the reasons why I didn't like to do a conical radius fretboard because it was really troublesome to make them. But then what I did was I switched over to using a router and a jig. And I did a video several years ago on this jig that I made that I could use to make, to, to radius a fretboard. And you can do a standard radius that's consistent from end to end. Or by adjusting it, you can also do conical radius. And that jig worked fairly well. Uh, it still was a bit um, uh, touchy to use and it, it still required quite a bit of sanding to perfect the radius. But it did work better than the method I was using with the radius sanding blocks. There are other jigs that I've seen out there and you could probably do a search on either YouTube or Google for compound radius routing jigs, something like that, I don't know. But I have seen them out there and they might work uh, maybe a little bit better than the one I had. Uh, at any rate, it, using the router was a better way to do it. But then once I got my CNC machine, that problem was solved. I can make a perfect rate, uh, conical radius fretboard very, very easily. Uh, do I do them very often? Not really. Uh, I find that personally, I think the conical radius is sort of a gimmick. <clears throat> it's kind of like, it reminds me of when I was in high school and me and my friends were uh, intent on souping up our cars. We wanted to, to build hot rods. We had no idea what we were doing and we had very limited budgets. 
So what we would do is we would buy speed parts based on what we read in car magazines. And I remember asking, a, fr or a friend of mine came up to me and he told me, yeah, I just bought a set of Lakewood traction bars for my Chevelle. I went, cool, what do those do? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> and that's kind of the same thing with the compound or conical radius fretboard. We think it's gonna make us a better player, but does it? I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's a bad thing, but I don't necessarily think as a builder, it's worth the effort to, to make it. Now, when it comes to installing frets, that's where things get even more complicated. I typically install frets using my um, fret press, which I have back down here. Now, fret press comes with a limited number, or you can get it with a limited number of calls that match the radius of your fretboard. But if you were to try to use the press the way it should be used to press the frets in on a conical radius fretboard, you would need a different call for each fret that would change in the radius to match the fretboard. Well, that's not practical, and they don't make them that way. Well, I found, well, in the beginning, actually, when I was first making them by hand with my sanding blocks, I was installing the frets, tapping them in with a fret hammer. And what I would do is I would use my, somewhere around here, I've got a, my fret radius wire tool. This is what you run the wire through to radius it. And what I would do is I would set it for 14 inches and I would radius the wire. And I might do three or four frets at that 14 inch radius. Then I would adjust the tool to tighten it ever so slightly so that the radius for the next four frets would be something like 13 and a half inches. And then I would continue that up the fretboard, adjusting every four or five frets until I was at 10 inches. And I would just tap those in. And that worked fairly well. Um, it, it, I think it works better when you're using nickel silver fret wire because nickel silver fret wire is a little more forgiving and when you tap it in, it will conform to the shape of your fretboard more easily. With stainless steel or, you know, like super jumbo frets, that's less likely. And when I started using a fret press to press the frets in, it works fine with the, 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 the nickel silver frets because when you press the fret down into it, the force that you're putting down is going to slightly deform the wood as you press it down. Then when you release it and lift the call up, the wood returns to the shape and your fret wire will conform to the shape of the fretboard. But that's only if it's nickel silver fret wire. I found that with stainless steel, because it's less compliant or pliable, it, it might start to pop out. So if you don't have the radius exactly what the, it is at that part at that slot, part of the fret could lift out of the, the slot. So if you were radiused all your fret wire to 14 inches and tried to press it in where there's a 10 inch radius at the nut end, when you lift it off, the ends of that fret wire are gonna pop up out of the slot. So that technique doesn't work. But if you do adjust your radius using your radius tool here, you can more closely match the radius of the fretboard as you go along. Now, when it comes to leveling the frets once they've been installed, I, you know, always have used the, uh, the old-fashioned method of using my, um, my fret leveling beams. And normally when I'm doing a consistent radius fretboard, I move the beam back and forth parallel to the center line of the fretboard. Since the fretboard tapers, with a consistent radius, you always want to follow that, that center line. You don't want to follow the taper. But with a conical radius fretboard, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to follow the taper. And what that does is it automatically levels your frets when you have a conical radius fretboard. And you can also use a technique where instead of going back and forth along that uh, following the taper, you can also start out 
at one edge and then sand over the top and down to the other edge. And that works well also. And then I also like to use the shorter beams to fine tune each end. And this also works well when you're trying to level the frets in such a way as to generate fall off from about the 15th fret up to the end of the, the fretboard. So obviously it takes a lot more work to make a uh, conical aka compound radius fretboard than it does to make a, a fretboard with a consistent radius. There's just a lot more uh, work involved and you have to be conscientious of how you install the frets and then the technique you use to level them. Is that work worth it? I think so. Because in the end, you end up with an instrument that's on a slightly higher level than if it had just a consistent radius. And if you build and sell guitars, that's a bonus. However, I think if you're in that situation, it definitely is another reason why you should consider CNC technology for making your guitars. Because making a conical radius fretboard is so much easier with a CNC machine than it is my using the old techniques of sanding with radius sanding blocks or using a router, handheld router, and a jig to form that, that conical radius. At any rate, whether or not that amount of work is worth it is really up to you. That's something you have to decide yourself. And I hope that you found this uh, video to be useful. And if so, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, again, welcome. And I hope that I've earned your subscription. So hit that subscribe button. And I hope that I'll see you in the next episode. And as always, until that next episode, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.